break it down to a very simple approach um, and very simple ways to see shape and knowing what time I cut it as for what shape I'm looking to acquire. Um, so throughout this haircut or throughout this uh, idea today, um, everything's gonna be very, very simple, very easy to do, basically. The basics of cutting hair, truly. Uh, I'm gonna show you right down to body position, down to combing, everything very detailed, very, um, very uh, user-friendly, very kind of haircutting for dummies, if you will. Not that any of us are dummies, but uh, um, if you can teach a dummy, you can be brilliant, basically. Um, and if a dummy can understand it, us dummy people can definitely understand it. Um, so into the clock cutting concept, as far as in the background of it. Uh, what I would like for you to do is take a clock on a wall, like an analog clock on a wall, take that off the wall, put it on the floor, imagine it facing upward. Go ahead and take one of the hands off the clock, okay? So now you only have one hand on that clock, yeah? And the clock's facing upward, so therefore then I would look at the, on perspective from standing from behind the head, I would see then that the nose, I think of the face is above. So the nose is being 12 o'clock, the right ear is being three o'clock, back vertebrae is six o'clock, and the left ear is nine o'clock. I hope you guys can all see that, yeah? Those are the primary hours within this concept with of primary, secondary, tertiary. We don't have tertiary, I don't like that word, it sounds silly. So what we have is primary and secondary, yeah? So the primary hours, again, are 12, three, six, nine. And I know this is kind of reversed. That's the right ear, this is the right side over here. So the right side is, three o'clock. So 12, three, six, nine primary hours. Then you have the secondary hours. The secondary hours are where those primary hours would meet right in the middle. So between 12 and three, if they were to start walking at the same pace at the same time, they would meet at 1.30 right in the front right secondary hour corner. Yeah, right at 1.30. And I hope you can understand that it's 1.30 because if it was one o'clock, it would be too close to 12. If it was two o'clock, it'd be too close to three. One thirty is the proper middle, the access point, the corner, yeah? So between three and six, they meet back here at 4.30, 7.30, and 10.30. I hope you guys can all see that as well. Um, I do have head sheets for this. If you guys need, we can, I can send them over to, uh, to Sharpfin, and we can get that sorted for you guys for future stuff as well. Um, so then with that then, Primary, 12, 3, 6, 9, secondary, 1, 30, 4, 30, 7, 30, 10, 30. Those all make a box, yeah? And within this box, if you can think inside of this box, you can create so many unlimited shapes, really. Um, let's see. Uh, awesome, thank you. So with this then, that understanding of this clock concept and these hours, these eight hours, and I keep it just under the eight hours. You can have all 12, but I kind of keep it simple, yeah? So within these eight hours, if I pull everything back and I cut it, if, if you cut everything right back here at six, it would be shortest at six, longer towards 12, A-line, triangle, Mormon Bob, Karen called the manager, call it whatever you want, that's what it's gonna do, yeah? If you pull everything and cut it at 12 o'clock, it would be shorter at 12, longer towards six, round, mullet, shag, call it what you want, that's what it's gonna do. If I cut everything back here at the secondary hour, 4.30, it'd be shorter at 4.30, longer towards 12 on the three o'clock side, longer, even longer towards 12 on the nine o'clock side because they had further time travel. I hope you guys can see that. So that gives an understanding of the, of the over direction. The next thing I'm gonna focus on with you guys today is then the, the um, elevation, the up and down movement, yeah? That, that goes through and creates the vertical dimension, yeah? And traditionally, within the vertical dimension, people would talk about, traditionally in the vertical dimension, people talk about degrees. Um, and I'm not too much concerned about degrees other than in my armpits, and if I get a little bit of body odor, I just remind them that it's quarantine, or I'm vegan, and then move on. Um, just kidding. Um, but in all honesty, I think that hairdressers aren't generally best friends with numbers. And if you put a little circle on the corner of the number and you have 180 of them all the way around here, it becomes super confusing, yeah? So I try to keep it super friendly and super like dude stoner safe, yeah? So I look at if a section of hair, whether it's vertical or horizontal, if I pull a section of hair out, let me just put this, put the horizontal section, I guess. If I pull a section of hair out, whether it's vertical or horizontal, if it is parallel to the floor, if it's parallel, if it's parallel to the floor and to the ceiling, 
that is right at noon. I'm not personally much of a morning person. I'm more of a night owl, yeah? So for me, if it's at all earlier than noon, I know the coffee's not kicked in. If I'm, all, if I'm elevating below noon, the coffee's not kicked in, I'm much heavier, I'm building up weight, I'm in graduation. As soon as I hit noon, the coffee started to kick in. And there's a magic little minute from noon to 12.01, basically, where it's kind of in limbo land. As soon as it gets past 12.01 or above noon, basically, I've reduced the weight, the coffee's, the coffee's kicked in, I've reduced all that weight in the morning, and I'm in layer land, yeah? So you're either right at noon, below noon in graduation land, above noon in layer land. Keeps it very simple on the vertical dimension. So what I'm gonna do throughout this haircut today is I'm going to do a round layer, meaning that it's gonna work shorter in the front, longer towards the back. So in this kind of manner, it would work shorter at 12, longer towards six, yeah? Um, and it's gonna be concave in the manner that it's gonna be opposing the head shape. It's gonna build length up the bottom, so it's gonna pose the head shape. It's gonna be concave then from 12 to six. It will also be concave from three to nine because everything will be pulled right into the center between the 12 and six o'clock line. Yeah, so by having that 12 o'clock, six o'clock line, it will be shortest then here at 12, slightly get longer up towards the corners, meaning that is concave, yeah. Um, so I'm going to first go through. I hope you guys have a, a decent understanding of the clock concept with that. Um, I don't have ability to see questions or anything like yep. that, but I hope that worked out good. So what I'm gonna do Ira, you're doing great. Right now everybody's following along, so roll with it. Perfect. So I'm going to go through and just get a little bit of moisture just for uh, balance and consistency. So getting that moisture throughout the hair, try to make sure that it's in the insides of the roots too, up to the ends, so that it's throughout all the hair as even as possible. And I'm going to go through and stand back here at 6 o'clock. While standing at 6 o'clock, I'm going to start back at 6 o'clock and comb all the hairs back from the back to the front. So that way I can glide through very nice and easy. I want to make sure all these hairs are all nice and combed back, nice and easy. I can go ahead and take a look in the mirror here and making sure that what I want to have is about a finger's width of a section. So about the width of a finger of a section, yeah? Um, so I could go ahead and put right down here. I could put right on the bridge of the nose, my middle finger if I wanted, and then come right up here. And this is more so for the beginners. You don't have to do this if you're, you know, you've been in the game for a long time. You can pretty much see. But for a beginner, this is great to go ahead and put your finger if you're right-handed and you're a grown-up like myself, then you put your, you put your comb on the left-hand side, the nine o'clock side of your finger. If you're left-handed, you would go like this and you put the comb on the right-hand side of your finger. Yeah, yeah, and if you're left-handed, just scrub. Just kidding, guys. Anyway, so right there, bring it on back. I can go ahead and go on the left-hand side. I can put my middle finger against that comb, my thumb on the top, and then we'll just squeeze these together. This hand pretty much just holds the comb. So I go over here and I squeeze it together, and I can go through, and then I go through and I make sure, you guys can kind of see this, I make sure that I go through and I squat from there down. So I squat down to continue that line to the bottom, yeah? So that way the line stays nice and clean and straight. I can come on over here to nine o'clock, comb all that hair on over. By doing that squat there, as opposed to, as opposed to uh, um, turning, I'll show you in a second, becomes a much cleaner straight line the first time, as opposed to having to do it multiple times, which to me, efficiency is very important in this game. I'm a very slow hairdresser. So for me, I need things to be as efficient as possible and, and be able to do things in a very timely manner um, when I can go ahead and be quicker because overall I'm slower. So I've got that first line drawn in. Now I can go through and put my finger right back here again my finger here and now I'm going to show you again as far as the difference of squatting or not so let me get here that and then if I were to turn so by squatting I stay straight I'm gonna do that because that's the proper thing to do so by squatting I stay straight homeless and I'll show you that okay Hi, so where did you get your spray bottle my spray bottle, um, this one is from uh, Cosmoprof, actually, I believe. Um, yeah, I just needed one that was good for, I don't use this one for salon-wise, but I use it for um, my perspective as key classes here with doll heads because of the fact that it can hold 
it's a nice big one. So it can hold a lot in there. So I don't have to keep refilling my water, my water bottle up so much. Um, let me just take a look. I feel, yes, I am. This is perfect. So I'm going to readjust this. No, yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm all right. So what you want to see is you want to see just like this, almost to where like this actually is like the very true center of the head right there. And you can see I have a little bit of three o'clock side and a little bit of the nine o'clock side. Yeah, that's where your torts will be proper. Yeah, so you don't want to be just on one side or the other. You want to be having just a little bit of both sides in there. So right down that true center. Um, and then by that squatting I was telling you about, it keeps your comb straight. Where if you squat or you turn, you're likely going to turn your comb as well. Yeah, so that's one thing that's very friendly. Um, and then with that then, we get this nice little strap that goes right along this whole head. Right from the front all the way down to the back. So a nice little mohawk section, section about the width of a finger. I'm gonna take that section, I'm gonna move my body and stand out over to three o'clock. I do feel I'm just a little bit over here. I'm sorry guys, I'm gonna redraw really this in real quick. I feel I'm a little off balance and that's gonna drive me mental. Okay, so let me just draw this real quick. While, while you're doing that, I'm gonna launch the polls, everybody. So we have some questions for you. I'm gonna go ahead and launch those while Ira's redoing his, uh, his parting. Thank you. And I use these clips here as far as in uh, clipping them off and everything in, in the teaching aspect. As far as in if I'm in salon, I don't clip it off, but it is very nice to have the clip off because it keeps it so much cleaner for you. Which to me, having the cleanliness is very, it's very uh, much needed for my ADD head. Because if I have it very messy and disheveled all around, my ADD head will definitely go off and get kind of disturbed I guess so I had to keep it as clean as possible for me to keep my head straight and to keep things understanding where I'm at skin will always let you know where to start and stop so having good clean sections let you know where to start and stop the skin of the face is where I what's going on here is this a beautiful I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do anything with that I'm not supposed to no do you're good you're good okay so now I feel a little bit more centered. I'm good with that. Perfect. So now I can go through and take this section. I'll stand over here at three o'clock, which is the right ear. So I stand over at three o'clock. I take a look. First, I, I want to take a look to see where I want the length to fall at. I remember being a young hairdresser and really being so scared about that first bit to cut. Like how, where should I cut it at? Let me know where to start. It's kind of like that first kiss kind of thing. Get that over with and you're good. But, uh, so I want to take a look at where I want to start these layers at. And I want to take and see if I go right, I can see how this is falling right here. This is kind of the top area of that, the apex of the bangs and it's falling right in there. Um, and so I can see, like if I look for a goal of sitting, let's just say right at lip. So we'll lift it up here a little bit. Right at lip, I can see I'm cutting a decent amount off. Being I'm cutting the front, I'm starting from the front when I lift it up here. I, what I need to look at is how much hair I'm cutting off. Now, how much hair is left, but how much hair I'm cutting off in this situation, because that's very important. And if I'm a younger hairdresser, and if you're wondering, could I go through and just clip it right at the lip to have a guide? You can, sure, but what I would recommend is if you cut it right, if, you, if your goal is to beak it to the lip, cut it at the chin. Because now you see, this is, there's no elevation in this. We're going to cut all the rest elevated above noon, and this is being cut below noon, meaning it's going to be very heavy. So if you cut that right at the lip, it's going to have a heavy spot right there. So if you cut it below, then you lift it up, then you know you take an inch off and you're good to go. And then it's all consistent. Yeah? But I'm not going to do it that way. I'm just going to take a look. I can see from this front area, I'm looking at taking off about, you know, three to four inches there. Yeah? So I can go ahead and lift this up then. I'm going to try to say 100 today. And 100 like the emoji in the manner that I'm going to try to make sure that I'm going to work only with the fine tooth, 100% of the fine tooth and or if your choice is 100% of the white tooth. Um, just don't, I just don't recommend going like 80-20, 80% fine, 80% loose, yeah, or, or wide tooth. Uh, so I want to have consistency in there as much as possible and want to have a, a consistent equality story being told here. So I'm going to pull this hair, I'm going to comb this hair up. I want to make sure the things that I'm thinking about with this haircut, while I'm standing here at 3 o'clock, I can see the 12 to six dimension. So what I'm gonna do is turn this way so you can see what I mean. 
So while I'm standing here at three o'clock, I can see how the hair's moving from 12 to six, yeah? And what I want to make sure is that every bit of hair, I wanna almost imagine, I wanna have you guys have in mind as if there were four equal powered magnets. So if there's a magnet at 12 o'clock, a magnet at three o'clock, a magnet at six o'clock, and a magnet at nine o'clock, and the hair's magnetized to it, if that were the situation, every time you go bloop, click, just like a, just like a, uh, uh, what is that little guy over there? Just like a Dyson blow dryer, it would click just like the devices, and it would click, click, and click right in place. Same spot every time. I'd make sure all the hairs are straight up then, so you would see this way, that the hairs are straight up, and I'm not shifting, that I'm not tilted to the wall, I'm not straight out of the head, I'm going straight up to the ceiling. So I'm parallel to the windows and the walls, there's no sweat dropping off of anything. Yeah, so I make sure that I'm straight up there, so I can see that while standing here at three o'clock. And then what I would do is get here, and I see that, okay, right about here's the bottom length that I was gonna take off. So then I could take a look in the mirror, and then I can see my, my nine to three dimension. Yeah, so that's where that mirror becomes a really good friend for you. Because oftentimes, I remember you, Willie, when we went through this, I think it was that nine o'clock side, the mirror was a really good friend for you to really determine the fact that you weren't quite far enough over often, I think. Yeah. Um, so the, the mirror will make a big difference and uh, what we think in our body is often very different than what is true. So the mirror is a good friend for you to have a good indicator to keep you proper. So I'm combing this hair straight up. I can see in the mirror there that I'm right between the 12 o'clock, six o'clock line, I'm good to go. I can go through and work with the tip of my scissor and just work with the tip. And as you can see, I'm opening, closing, and then I'm pulling away. Opening, closing, pulling away, I'm gonna stop right at the second knuckle. So I keep it nice and clean. So it's a nice clean line there. And I can take, I'm gonna turn her this way so you guys can see it this way. So what I can do is once I've cut that first piece, I get rid of it, for most of it at least. I go ahead and let it drop out of the way. So I drop that out of the way so that way I only deal with what I need to deal with. If I have more in my finger than what I need to deal with, that can become confusing and I may do something I'm not meant to do. So I'm gonna take this and comb it straight up again. I have just that little bit, I hope you guys can see, there's just a little bit of guide right there. So I take that little bit of guide and I continue it through. Coming straight up, I would take a look and make sure again that I'm, I'm reading these roots all through here that they're going straight up out of the head or straight to the ceiling. I can check in the mirror that I'm not leaning to nine or three. And I can go through and cut. Continue through. That's a great shot. Perfect, thank you, Willie. Continue through, just go, checking those roots, going right straight up. There's my guide right there. So it's really nice and clean and nice. I hope that you guys are getting this in the, in the camera there still. Am I, do I need to lower her, Willie, or is she all right? I guess I'm all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue through. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this until, in, to infinity, basically, until the last bit reaches to the top, which basically in most situations is right around the oboe. Basically, you're looking at getting everything up there inside the oboe and up. And there we go. And I just continue that straight through. So I'm gonna show you guys one thing that I find to be a really cool thing. And then I'll go through the hair haircut. Because this is something I find to be really, really, really cool. Um, so we cut a solid line. Let's just make sure we did. We cut a solid line from 12. Just clean, just make sure everything is solid. Solid line from 12 to six. Make sure it was just a continual, continual round line, meaning that it was shorter at 12, longer towards six. Okay, so it is a solid line. Now the cool thing with this, hopefully you guys can get a visual of this. When we drop this down, since we cut a solid line here, going from 12 to six, it should then, the way I was taught when I was a kid, was that if you cut this up here, you get, you get this down here. And if you cut this up here, flat, you get flat down here. You get triangular, you get longer towards the front, down like this. So this is a really cool thing. This was a solid line, cut triangular, shorter in the front, longer towards the back. But when I take this and I comb this down, watch what this does, it's so cool. When I comb this down, this will go shorter to longer, shorter to longer. So right here, you can see it's, sh it's shortest right here, longer here, shortest right here, longer here. 
if you're not sure why that is, I can let you know. It's because of the apex, it's the head shape and the, the head shape of the head, the shape of the head, sorry. The landscape of the head is the apex of the bangs. The apex of the bangs is less distance, is the high point of the bangs, is less distance to make it to the top, has further distance to make it to the bottom. Yeah, and so keep that in mind, especially whenever you're in a situation without bangs. So it becomes very friendly then with that, you get a nice sweeping forward feel in that, and then you have the option to have both sides swing in, and or still have both sides swing back too because there's space there. And or have that shorter piece be the guide to make it a straight pair of bangs, to make it the shortest, the guys make the shortest to make it an arched pair of bangs, or the shortest to make it an asymmetric pair of bangs. All your options. Yeah, so it's very friendly in that manner. I just want to show you that as an extra. So now what I've done is I've cut that line, this guide, the center piece is going to be my guide for my whole three o'clock side and my guide for my whole nine o'clock side. I'm going to first go ahead and cut the three o'clock side. So I'll take the clip right out of the three o'clock side there. I'm going to take and comb this hair, comb that guide, that center guide right out over to the three o'clock side. Take some moisture in here. Remoisturize everything again for consistency and glide and smoothness, consistent weight in the hair too. So many benefits are truly about moisture in hair. <clears throat> I'm going to stand back at 4.30. So I stood at six o'clock to draw the first section. I stood at three o'clock to cut the first section. Now all the sections on the, th on the three o'clock side, I will stand at three o'clock to draw my section. The reason I'm going to stand at 3 o'clock to draw my section is because I want to draw a diagonal section. I want to draw a diagonal line. So the corners are a great place to stand at when you want to create a diagonal line because they're in the middle of the two flat lines, basically. Yeah? So if you want to draw a proper diagonal to where it's truly a mix of horizontal and vertical, if you stand at a corner, there's a higher opportunity for that. If I stood at 3 and I draw it, I'd likely draw it more horizontal diagonal. If I stood at nine and drew it, I'd likely draw a more vertical diagonal, yeah? Or if I stood at six and drew it, I'd draw a more vertical diagonal. But if I stand at 430, it's a really good chance I'm right in the middle that I can draw a proper, true diagonal, yeah? So I find where three o'clock's at, I go up on that skin line, here's three o'clock. I put my finger down and I draw a line right on back. I just take that and I just draw a line from that one over, and I'll show you the section here in a minute so you guys can see this. In it. So this time she didn't flash us. A couple weeks ago we did a, I was doing something, she came down, she didn't know. She looked up her shirt and showed my people room. That's great, crazy. Anyway, so here's the line, the diagonal, that's drawn right back to 4.30. And then a flat line drawn right back to six o'clock. Yeah, so even though you're working with a triangular section, funny enough, you're cutting a round shape. So that's kind of unique there. So I'm gonna take this. Stand right back at three o'clock, comb that section all up to that 12 o'clock, six o'clock line. If you want, if it feels too long for you, sorry, come on, go ahead. If it feels too long for you from here all the way back to here, you can go through and split that section if you want. I'll, I'll split it just to, since I brought it up for you, I'll go ahead and split it. And if you do split it, just twist it and put it away so that way you don't lose itself basically. You don't have to refine it. So I comb through again, making sure that all the hairs, I'm reading all the roots here and I'm making sure again that I'm not leaning to 12 or six. And then I check in the mirror, making sure that I'm not leaning towards six or 12, six, I'm sorry, that I'm not leaning towards nine or three, that I'm right in the middle. Just again, like there are three magnets, or sorry, four magnets working through there. So now I'm gonna continue this line through. Ira, do you start all your haircuts in the middle like this? Um, no. Uh, this, I would say, is – I start – I will only start my haircuts in the middle if I'm looking for, symmet or for symmetry, generally, from side to side, um, in the sense of it being, you know, off of the center, it's symmetrical. So if I were to go – which is a good question, by the way, really. If I were to go through and do this on a part, say if she parted her hair from 9 o'clock over to 3 o'clock, Traditionally, I know classically, I was always told to put the center guide right on the part. Um, that's the way I was always told back in the 90s into the even early 2000s, I remember. Um, but that only makes it even more, uh, even more asymmetric, truly, on the top. So if I wanted to be a side part, 
and have it be symmetrical. Instead of bringing the center guide over the part line, bring it over to the other corner. Bring it over to the 130, 430 line and have your guide over there. And that way there's balance then from side to side. Yeah. Brody, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I've gone ahead and cut that first section. I'm just going to take a look just to make sure. So I did it. We talked. Everything looks fine and dandy. Everything looks good. Cut that first section. She's good. So now I can just come right back on over to 430. I now find about an inch or two forward, which is basically about the high point of the, the apex of the bangs. I go ahead and draw another section right on back. Section right on back and draw that across. Make another triangular, triangle section back here. And I'll show it to you again, just so you guys are aware of it. And when I think about it too, I have a head sheet for this haircut as well. So I'll send it over to Willie as well, so you guys can possibly have that for future for you as well if you need. So here is the triangular section, straight back, and then just working across the back there. Yep. So there's that. I'm gonna take this again. Standing right here at 12 o'clock, trying to make sure the head's in a consistent upright position. So you have consistency as much as possible there too. I'm gonna write on up to that 12 o'clock, six o'clock line, making sure that I'm 100% comb, making sure that it's straight up. I'm not leaning towards 12, I'm not leaning towards six, and I'm not leaning towards nine or three. Once I'm all good, then I can come in here and go ahead and cut right that first knuckle, stop. Stay right up. up. So there, I'm a little bit back behind my guide, so I want to make sure I'm a little bit more forward. I slid back further than I needed to. There we go. So I'm there. I'm good there. Cool. I'm going to cut right to the second stop. There we go. Just a little bit right there, and then cut that through. So now we're on to the final section. Final section, I'm gonna come back and stand back more towards six o'clock here because I'm gonna make more of a straight horizontal section here. And I'll turn it this way so you guys can see that better there, I guess. Well, first I'll go this way. What I'm looking to do is basically find the corner. So I put my hand on the top of the head, I put my comb right like this, and right where that comes together is the corner. So I'm gonna go right from that and disconnect. I'm just gonna leave this whole bottom area there. And I'm gonna disconnect this uh, because of the fact that so this haircut was first introduced to me from Tony and Guy back in the late 90s, basically. Um, they did this haircut, I think they probably put this haircut together probably in the, in the 80s or so. Um, and uh, when, when it was taught to me, it was taught to put all of this up there. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a very beautiful shape. It coutures the line, of the, the hairline a little bit more. But the thing that I found over time that I didn't like is that it took this area, the temples, are, are generally not as dense as the rest of the hair throughout the head. Um, so it's a little bit less dense through here, and they're very fragile hair. So if they've been highlighted or, or, or uh, chemically treated at all in this front area, they become even more fragile, more thin. So I keep this area disconnected. So if I want to frame the face, I can have a nice thick frame, as opposed to a really wispy, overly soft frame. Also, by bringing this up, it can make it a little bit more mullety than what people want. Um, so as the, even though right now shags and mullets are trendy again, they weren't for a long part of my career. Um, so I decided to disconnect this, making it to where I wasn't making all my clients turn super mullet, basically. So now I'm on this final one. I can take my comb here and look at kind of put my comb aligned with the hairline. So I can put my hair, comb right there, put it right here. So then I know I can go ahead and comb right up from that spot as a section. I comb that right on up again, straight up to that 12 o'clock, six o'clock line while standing right here at three o'clock because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you would stand at nine o'clock because it's much easier to cut from short to long. Yeah. So now I'm there, I'm, par I'm set here, I'm not shifting to 12 or six, and I can see I'm not shifting to three or nine. I can go through here then and open and close my scissor. Cut that line into place. And just take just this one last final one, just to make sure it's all through. 
Ira, real quick too, could you speak to why you're combing the direction you are and yes, you fully. the way you are, please? Yes. Yes, I am combing in towards I am combing in towards the center again because what I'm what my goal is is to achieve to achieve a concave shape from from first off from twelve to six because I'm cutting it shorter at twelve, higher towards six, so it gets uh it's it's filling and opposing the head shape, so it's getting longer towards six, so it's opposing the head shape, coming concave there, and I'm bringing I'm combing towards the center of the hair of the head as to make it then become concave then from three to nine as well. So if I were to comb to the outside, then I'd be more likely to make more of a convex shape. I'd be more likely to follow a couture of the head, um, collapsing the shape and have it follow the head shape a bit more. Great question. Um, so the three o'clock side then at this point is sorted. So I can go ahead and take this down, take a look at it and see what it's doing on a on a eyeball kind of check. I tend to be, as far as in salon, more of a, an eyeball guy, taking a look to see what it's doing, more so than really lifting hair up and cross-checking it. So I'm checking to see on this that it's very, it's very soft and fluid. I can see on this, horse, on this profile here, I can see where there's the layers that I've cut in through here that I could go through if I wanted then and have it then mat. I have it be disconnected like this and have it be very, vertical and very more vertical like this, or I can still open it up and have it be much more connected right to that layer and work through if I wanted as well, yeah? I'm gonna keep it disconnected though today, but you could go through and connect that if you desire. So now I'm gonna go through and just uh, re-moisturize everything a little bit here. And before that, let me go through and do a cross check here for you too. Since this is more of a teaching aspect, I'll give you a, a proper way to cross check it. So I would recommend if you're gonna, when you're cross-checking the three o'clock side, stand at 12 o'clock to cross-check it. Um, so I first draw a finger width section, basically like from nine to three, a vertical section here. I comb this up and what I ought to see, what I ought to see is I ought to see either a flat line to a slightly rising line to the outside. It definitely shouldn't go this way. If it went this way, I did wrong. I liked it combed to the outside and or I didn't reach all the way over to my actual 12 o'clock, six o'clock line. So let's take a look and see what we've done. So I comb this up. I'll have it go straight up. The line is just like I said, it's shorter and into longer. Yeah, and maybe a little bit of a higher spot right in the center, and if so, then a I would say it'd be more of like a 98% test score, because it maybe could be just a little bit more over, but pretty consistent otherwise. In the first one, then I, check, I take another little cross check for the high point of the bangs, or the apex of the bangs here. Just check them, just to make sure there's consistency in there, and we should see again from shorter into longer, just like that, a nice clean line there. Cool. So I can take this then, I take, I come back to six o'clock, I comb everything back to six o'clock, to my body, to me, and then I'll come through here and draw in that center guide again, again squatting, I have to keep it nice and straight. I comb this over. And then what I do is go ahead and grab the clip from the nine o'clock side. <laughs> Oopsie. Sorry guys, one second. Take your time, you good? <laughs> That's funny, sorry guys. Okay, let me just get this, get this back. Did you guys see last week when, did you, did you follow Ruth Roach by chance, Willie? I do, but I didn't see last week, no. Oh my gosh, she, poor girl, she was cutting hair, and I'm watching her on this live, she's cutting hair, and all of a sudden, she moves to the back area of the head, and she, she straight up, uh, she slipped on um, all the hair, basically, and fell, and it was the scariest thing, because all of a sudden, she slips and falls, and uh, she gets up, and she's like, oh my gosh, my head, my head, my head, I'm so sorry, guys, I gotta stop. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was just so scary, because... 
here's this poor girl trying to do a good job, you know, sharing education, and she freaking falls and hurts herself. Luckily, she's all right. But um, so what I did there, while that fell, <laughs> while my phone <laughs> fell, and I apologize for that. What happened during that time frame is I went ahead and took the clip out of the nine o'clock side. And I clipped the three o'clock side. Also, one thing that I do on both situations too is I twist the hair forward when I clip it. And I do that as to make sure that the hair comes away from the center line so I can see that line very well. Um, and one other thing just to be a little mindful, especially for you younger students, make sure that you're not twisting this all too, too, too tight. Yeah? Because if you twist it too tight, especially say from the nape area, mainly from the nape area, because if you twist this so tight, you might stretch that skin away from the skull. In the nape and in the temples, you need to be very aware of that. So if you stretch that skin too tight away from the skull, it's not going to be honest when it's naturally just sitting on the head. Yeah. So you want to make sure you, you have good tension, but don't pull too tight and be aware of the skin and those roots throughout those nape and temple areas. Unless someone's got a soft skull throughout, then be very mindful everywhere. So now I'm going to take that center guide and join it into the nine o'clock side. And everything I'm going to do here is going to mirror and mimic and oppose everything I did on the other side. Minus, I'm going to still work everything from short to long. And this is one thing that I do different. The second thing that I do different, I guess technically the third. First, I do different than the toning guy original natural version haircut that was taught to me when I was young was that I teach it within my clock concept. That's number one. Number two, I do the disconnection. And then number three, Tony and Guy taught us to stand at nine o'clock and cut this nine o'clock side from long to short. I do not recommend that. I don't like that style. Um, it's not good straight away. My armpits are up in their face right away. So many things that just aren't friendly. Um, so I recommend still standing, still standing at three o'clock to cut your nine o'clock side. So er and we just ergonomically to too, it, it'd be rough on your shoulders, neck, uh, all it's, that. Yeah. There, you're fully right on that. There's lots of things that really just do not put like a natural, comfortable flow cutting from the back long into the front short. It's a very awkward feeling, I think. Um, and respect to people who do it, I guess. I'm just not one of them. So I stand over here then. I stood at 4.30 to draw all my sections on the 3 o'clock side. So now I'll stand at 7.30, the opposite corner, the back left corner. I'll stand at to draw all my sections. And also where I draw the hair too. That's the other thing too. I don't have this hair just going straight down to, to nine o'clock. It's not going straight down to the floor. It's diagonally back. And the reason I have it diagonally back is I want to have a fluid motion. I want to be very friendly when I slide and glide through this hair. Um, so on the other side, I find we're in three o'clock set. This time I find we're nine o'clock set. And then I just draw right on back. And again, I'm going basically right to the oboe right to where it fit previously. And we already saw previously the triangles, so we don't need to re-show that. Another triangle in place here. But what I'm gonna do on this side for you is I'll cut it this way so you can see the up and down, I guess. Brilliant. Hey, Ira, we do have a question. Sure. Why, why the um, triangle section? Why, that's a great question. Why the triangle section as far as in this triangle section here, as I'm sure they're asking. So there's a really, really, really great reason for that. One diagonal again flows and, and connects things in a mix of up and down and side to side. Yeah, so that's one thing. This diagonal section is the most important part there. And the beauty of it, and you'll see it on this one too, which is a perfect time for you to ask me that question. I'm gonna split it in half again here. And then just again, twist this so it stays, twist this so it stays together. Bring this here. Come on, right on up here. So because of this diagonal section, because it's a diagonal back section, as opposed to being a, a vertical section or a horizontal section, this sectioning gives me a situation to where, again, it connects from front to back and from top to bottom. But what it really does, too, is it gives me a really awesome guideline because there's a little corner. There'll be a little peak right here that you can see right here that there's no hair behind it because of the diagonal back section. Yeah, so that way I'm in a very clear understanding of my guide. I can see it right, boom, right there, no hair. So then I can put my fingers up right where the rest of the section's at. So I have that diagonal back section for, or the diagonal back section for the 
fluid connection of top to bottom and side to side, along with the extra guide and insurance by seeing that guide pop out and seeing this front little bit right there with no hair behind it that I can then go through and comb through, find my guide there, and then line my fingers up with the rest of the section and then be sound. I hope Brilliant. that answered your question. Yes, it did. 15 minutes, my friend. Perfect. Continuing this through. Now this is the side, I will say for most people, as much as I'm not using the mirror on this side, this is the side where most people definitely want to make sure to check the mirror. Let's just see if I'm in an all right spot here. I was pretty safe, yeah. And generally the reason why I know I'm safe is that what I can do without using the mirror is I can make sure that I comb my section of hair to where the bridge of my comb is right past that skin line. That's another beauty of utilizing a comb indicator slash having skin as an indicator as a start and stop spot. So I have a nice clean section to again let you know where you need to be at in a haircut. Okay, comb this right on up. I'm splitting it since that's just what I've been doing. And since it's kind of more introductory for smaller, more younger hairdresser hands, take your section smaller. More sections mean more practice. Can, smaller can we, sections mean more control. Can we see this cut from the side view again? This yes, cut, certainly can. View? Certainly can. So Thank again, you. there we can see that I'm that I'm safe, that I'm right between a 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock line. And I can come over here and we can see that line dropping down. And again, be mindful that all the hairs are coming straight up to the ceiling, basically. It's not straight out of the head, but they're coming straight up to the ceiling. And there's my guide. Shouldn't be too much, but a little piece to connect here. Yep, just a little bit right through there. There's that. And then for the final section, I'll go ahead and keep it just like this for you guys even. Final section, I comb it. I stand back here towards six o'clock. I comb more of a horizontal section. Straight back. Again, find that corner. Comb that straight back. Great shot. Perfect. Come right here again. Measure out to where I can see the, the mid part of the combs right there. So I'm 100 of the comb. And then go right on down to that line and then come right on up. And again, always combing towards the center. So I don't have a, a mind that I'm always combing towards me or combing away from me because I'm doing both. I'm, I'm doing the same thing on sync. On what, I have one thought pattern then. Just comb towards the center. Or if I have to comb to the outside, if I'm thinking comb towards me, I'm only thinking comb towards me on the 9 o'clock side. Now I've got to think comb away from me on the 3 o'clock side. It's too many things to think about. So I try to keep it very simple. Comb towards the center because I'm looking for concave shape from three to nine. Straight up. There's my guide. Everything good there. Let me turn it this way since we did that for the rest of them. So you can again see that's going straight up there. That's not shifting to 12. It's not shifting to six. Straight up like Paula Abdul. There's my guide. And I can go through here and work and cut through. Straight up. Just a little bit right there. There should be just maybe a little bit to touch, if anything. Yeah, nothing really much. Just a little something to clean up. Cool. So we've got that one there. So we can again comb this down, take a look at it on the visual check to see how it's doing. To see that again that it's very uh it's doing what concave does in a sense of becoming very uh seamless because there's no because it's not following the head shape it's really filling where it's where it loses itself through here so you don't get any um all the hairs kind of fall on each other so it becomes very kind of seamless very buttery 
very melted layers like you would if you were thinking using the words of color almost. So just a very nice loose, as you can see, it's great for curly hair, um, especially like a natural kind of loose wavy curly hair. It's really beautiful for um, taking a look at that. Then we can take a look at a cross check again. And again, on the nine o'clock side, I would cross check while standing at six o'clock. And I didn't say exactly why, but to give you the exact why, is because of the width of my finger changes from the tips to the base, yeah? So if I check it with the tips on the inside here, and if I check the three o'clock side with the base wider here, it's not really true. It's not the same angle as living in there. So I check it this way here, and then I check this side this way here. So it's consistent. Both of the tips of my fingers are on the center of the head. If you don't have consistency in your checking, how are you gonna really truly test it? So again, it should be either flat to slightly longer, and just like that, flat to slightly longer there, and let's just check one more in this front top area. And just like that, shorter into longer there, yeah? So we can take a look at that, drop this down, we can then go ahead and take both clips out at this point, or all the clips out at this point. Go ahead and moisturize all the hair. I, I comb the hair forward, as to really kind of check to see what's going on then on both sides. Get a really good check on both sides. So I comb this hair forward, and as I comb this hair forward, I comb it basically down off the swirl of its growth pattern. I'm giving myself a little visual check at this point as well. And what I'm checking and looking for is um, some consistency in the movement of the hair. Let's see, sorry about that. Some consistency in the movement of the hair, meaning that, um, meaning that they're both doing the same things in this front area especially. Yeah, that they're both, you can see, they're both being pretty, pretty friendly, very uh, um, family-like and doing similar things to where they're both working just like this, yeah? Neither one of them are like all of a sudden one flipping out. If one was flipping out, it meant that it was somehow really concave in this front spot. This front spot is technically convex on the very first spot. It's convex and then it turns concave. Um, so this front spot, it should just sit in very nicely, just like that, right at the chin. It's like our goal. Um, and then we have the rest of the hair here. Total option. I'm going to leave it because I like the extensions of things, to be honest with you. But um, by all means, if someone wanted to, uh, most of my clients are always trying to keep their hair the longest they can, to be honest with you. So I'm generally just dusting ends when it comes to my clients. So, But in this situation, what I'm going to do for you guys today is, I got time. I'm going to diffuse her a little bit. So I'm going to put some product in here just so you guys can see a little bit closer how I finish. I'll put some of this extra spray, that's going to be a day. And I'll give you a little, normally I would just let this air dry because it's just such a pretty look to let air dry, but I'll give you a little, um, a little diffusing, share with you the way I diffuse hair basically. So guys, we're coming to the end here. If you have questions that I didn't answer, forgive me, but now would be the time to ask. So I would take, for the most part, on this type of diffuse too, I would keep her hair, like if, I, if she were a client, I would keep her hair right in her face like this. Because I'm gonna just at the end, then choose to put it wherever I want, whether it's off the center part or a side part. But I would keep it right in her face just like that. I would, I'm gonna work any kind of blow dryer at all, I would work, I'm gonna work for the, the Dyson, but if you have, no matter what blow dryer you have, I would work at your lowest velocity, turn your velocity to the lowest, and generally at the highest heat. So Dyson does get pretty hot, so I put it at the mid heat, yeah? Um, and then what I would do is I let my client know wherever they want the volume at, lean on that side. So if they want the volume over here starting at three o'clock, let me loose this just a little bit, that's a little tight, there we go. So she wanted the volume starting over here at three o'clock, then she would lean over to three o'clock, take a chopstick, a chopstick like this, I hope you guys can see that. And then I take the chopstick, low velocity on the blow dryer, high heat, take the chopstick on the high part of the head, lift the hair up a little bit, 
and just put those hairs right into the diffuser, put it right up against the head. And I have it pushed against the head as opposed to having the diffuser face upward so that way it doesn't blow those hairs apart. So I come in here, have the hair go right up against the head. And that way they're controlled in there and they're kind of like slinkied in there. And the volume you can see by having that hair, by having that head come off the, or having that, you lean the direction wherever you want volume at, the root is already coming off the head on this three o'clock side. So already, it's already telling the hair to be able to, to be off the scalp, to lift, to have volume. Guys, just so you know, Ira's, Ira's going to send me a head sheet. Anybody yes, that wants, anybody that's on here that wants that head sheet for this haircut, please email me at Willie at sharkfinshears.com. So Willie, W-I-L-L-Y at sharkfinshears.com and I'll happily send it out to you. So I think about this when I'm, when I'm confusing this, I think of it as kind of like a slow cooking method. Yeah, I'm not diffusing this in a very high speed, blow the hair all over the place manner. I'm doing it in a very slow controlled, slow cooking manner, really. Um, and it ought to be diffusing, to me, ought to be kind of a nice, like, kind of relaxing time. Um, you can go through if you wanted to put even more, like, uh, twist and more curls into it. What you can do is put them in there and then just simply turn your diffuser. And now you put more twist into it. Yeah, there's another great option to get even more. You see all that crazy volume that just came out of that one little part there because I twisted it. Yeah? So I'm going to switch it over to 9 o'clock. And I'm not going to repeat this whole thing. I'm just going to get that front area so you guys can get the idea of the shape that happens. That way we're going to perfect, I think, right into this uh, um, one hour time zone for you. And I will also put on my own uh, Instagram on my story, which is at um, I R A P O P E F A G E, I report Sage at Instagram. Um, I'll post this in my story and I'll also tag that over to Shark Fin so they have that for themselves. I don't generally do a lot of lean forward and diffusing it only because of the decade that we're in. If we were in the 80s, I definitely would have done a lot of that because the bangs were much bigger and fuller in the 80s. Um, so in the 80s, you would have leaned forward and diffused that front area, but not so much in 2020. Yes, who knows, we might be getting big bangs in no time. <laughs> So I'm not going to rush this to make it all of a sudden set up for you guys, otherwise it's going to show in the final result. So but this, this gives you a little idea of really utilizing, utilizing your chopstick, your diffuser with the, with the prongs, with a lean, wherever you want volume at, taking the chopstick, lifting up the hair, getting those hairs in there, and putting it right up to the skull. I have it on a low blow so that way I can stay there longer. You might think I'm saying they're very long only because of the doll head, but it's not. It's because I know that's about the same amount of time I stand in human because it's not super blowing, it's super hot. It's not screaming hot air because it's not uh, a high velocity. So I'm going to go with that for right now. Have this look, weird. put this in a place where it has a decent little, I can just even shake her. Shake her a little bit. Just let her fall down and do a little bit more of a natural so you guys can have a little bit of that finished see of seeing how it works really like really nice full shape through here. Just really fluid like when you see this profile here, especially on this nine o'clock side where I didn't twist it. This side I twisted it so put a little bit of a little bit of a fake volume in there truly. Um, but I can still kind of work some of those twists out. So you get just a nice shape is very elongated, very vertical. Again, that's coming from that concave factor here. And then also looking at this here, you just see a very, and this is gonna be my prettier six and I twist it. You just see, again, the bangs in that front area, if you want to frame out this bottom area, you can frame that out later, right from that spot, 
and have it be much more solid and firm, yeah? As opposed to having it becoming um, really thin. If I had to pull this up here and cut it like it was taught to me originally, this would be really thin down here. But instead, it's got the, you got longer the length and it's got the options for me to go ahead and cut that through. And then in the back area, again, you just see all this falls down nice and fluid as it falls down, because again, it's all in concave world, yeah? So I really hope you guys enjoyed this presentation today of the introductory within my clock concept, the introductory into a very, very salon friendly haircut, working into uh, round layers, shorter at 12, longer towards six, everything cut between the 12 o'clock, six o'clock line. Awesome, hey bro, just real quick for those who are on, cause you're on again tomorrow, what are we thinking for tomorrow's haircut to build on to today? On to today? Tomorrow, to, tomorrow what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with uh, a, I'm gonna work with a technique of stroking. So here, today I cut everything blunt, like this traditional blunt cutting. Tomorrow I'm gonna work with a technique of stroking. So the technique right away would be more advanced. Um, I'm gonna work with, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna pre-cut actually a bottom and just have that pre-cut disconnected to a, a nice gradual, a nice disconnected shorter bottom area. And I'm gonna dry the whole top and work with dry hair cutting working basically a nice graduated bob, um, slightly triangular graduated bob, shorter in the back, longer towards the front. Excellent, bro. The feedback is amazing. Obviously, I'll share all this with you after we're done here. But yeah, um, cool. many Very happy that everyone liked it. Also, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I am. People have already emailed me for the head sheet, so if you could just make yes. sure I get <laughs> if I'll I can. Get, I'll send that over to you yeah. right as soon as I close off everything right now. You're the man. Thank you everybody for joining us and uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. You can register already for tomorrow's class on sharkfinshears.com. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys. Hope to see you tomorrow. Thanks, Ira. Be Have safe. Bro. Thank, Thank you. you Bye. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you.